In this video, I'm going to show you how to take a sheet of printed graphics, slap it in your laser cutter nice and precisely, and cut them graphics out for stickers, paper craft, etc. Let's get started. All right, so we need something to cut. In this case, I found a PDF uh, from a car and driver of a Cybertruck papercraft model. It did not come with these outlines prepared for cutting, so what I had to do is go around with the direct selection tool, select them all, and set them to a color that I want to use uh, to, tell, to tell the laser that it's a separate layer for cutting. And I also went through and selected all these fold edges and separated the color out for those as well so that we can perforate those with the laser and make them easier to fold. Uh, I missed this tire, it looks like, so I'm gonna go ahead and fix that real quick by cutting it in half. Selecting our color of the swatch panel here. I also went ahead and added a registration circle of one millimeter in the top left and the bottom right. The pin I'm going to use is actually a little bit bigger than one millimeter, but that'll mean it'll be snug when I push it into the cardboard. Um, and just make sure that your outline isn't so large that you can't see the center of the circle because I'm going to use that little white center for pushing the pin through. Um, lastly, when I print this, I may not want this pink line and this yellow line to show up in the printed file. So if you know how to use the swatch panel here, you see you can double click on the color that you're worried about and you can totally change it. See now the pink is gone um, and I can print it and then I can go ahead and change it back before sending the file to the, to the laser. Um, but otherwise this file is totally ready. Let's go. Let's pull our file in to Lightburn and take a look. So we've got a lot of content here that we're not going to use at the laser. All we're concerned about is the registration marks, the perforation cuts, and the outline. So let's figure out what's what here. Easiest way to do that is to hold down control and click. That will blink whatever it needs blinking. So we know, okay, that's not that. Let's see. So there's our registration marks. Definitely want to output those. Right, at least show those. We don't, we don't need red. We don't need black. We don't need orange, we don't need almost any of this. Oh, we do need that, definitely want that. Okay, so we're up by the laser here. I've got a sheet of sacrificial cardboard laid down that is larger than a sheet of paper. I am going to go ahead and mark it with both of our registration circles. Hopefully one of them doesn't end up in the, this other pre-cut area, otherwise I'm going to have to flip the cardboard or move it or whatever. Um, I've got just the registration holes set to output, so let's just see where that's going to end up. Cut those. Okay. Here's my pin. Let's see how that fits into the hole here. Very nice. Not bad, okay. So I'm gonna get the head out of the way without rehoming it or without resetting the origin. And I'm going to take the graphic, poke a hole in the circle there, and then I'm going to poke it through here to line it up. Then I'm gonna take this other corner here, camera, and just kind of fold it in half over the at that circle. You could cut it too, but I don't want to waste that time. So basically, now I can pivot it on the pin until it lines up. And that looks good. And then I'm gonna take a piece of uh, masking tape. This side down. Looks good. Looks real good. And then before taking the pin out, I'm gonna mask, throw some masking tape on the other side as well. Okay, uh, take the pin out. And now that should be where it needs to be. So I'm going to set our layers to output which are, let's see, yellow for the perforation here, whoops, and pink for the cutting. All right, let's see what happens.
like it's cutting each line twice. Like I accidentally had that layer set to cut twice. It kind of sucks in case if anything moves. Actually, hold on, I'm gonna pause. It's gonna, this guy's gonna get cut in half. Side. What I should have done was uh, done some perforation on like on uh, this layer so that it left the pieces in place on the on the. Uh, sheet, especially if you're cutting smaller items that are going to go flying around, that'll hold them in place and then it just leaves just enough of a tab that you can rip it out when you're ready. Um, maybe like cut for, oh, there goes Elon, maybe have it cut for like 20 millimeters and then have it skip every like half a millimeter, quarter, oh son of a almost went off without a hitch. We just lost Franz's, Franz's head. Oh, there we go. So let's see, how did we do? Did I miss some lines? How did we miss that? This might have been accidentally in a different color over here. So I would say that's mostly been a success. This is my first time cutting this file. If I had been prepared, we would have done a little better. But the main idea here is the registration, not um, not about actually making this car. So you can see it did pretty dang good. And for most cases, especially if you have a bleed on your graphic, that's going to work out pretty good. So here's how those perforations turned out. I would say the registration is pretty damn good. You can't really ask for much better than that. And you'll notice that um, you can see a little faint, like around the cut lines, you can see a little faint um, magenta. And that's because all I did was crank up the, uh, the black value and I didn't bring down the magenta value. So um, in CMYK, it still throws that color down if you still have that slider up. So it'll look black, but only if the your colors are perfectly registered in your printer over top of each other. Um, so this is a little offset yellow line here too, you might not be able to tell. Um, but yeah, see, you can see a little bit of magenta there. Um, but yeah, so here's the, the folding. Nice clean edges. I should have used a thicker paper, I think, but I didn't know what I was up against. Play my settings. Hey, we're done. Oh, wait, did I forget this one? Yeah, this one didn't get creased. Probably find some other ones that I missed. So the reason I've gone down this rabbit hole in the first place was because I wanted to be able to make decent quality stickers in-house without getting a vinyl cutter because I mean hell, look at I've already invested uh, so much of this thing that can cut things. Problem is, uh, A, I can't really print on vinyl and B, you're not supposed to cut vinyl with these otherwise it produces uh, toxic gases. So I'm trying to avoid that. Um, so now that I've got the, this registration thing figured out, that actually solves most of my problems in, in order to be able to, be able to see the sticker, what, it's, what the color or what the, what the colors look like, what the dimensions uh, look like held up to whatever it's for. Um, so this is great and this may be as far as I take this because I still like to have a, you know some of this stuff professionally made. If I'm going to be making things in the hundreds, you know this process might get a little laborious if you're if you're going long term. You might as well just pay like a sticker company to make stickers. But I was able to find this stuff which should be laser cuttable. It's laser printable. Um, but it should also be laser cuttable because it's polyester. I don't think that that would be an issue. It's a little pricey at about a dollar a sheet unless you buy, uh, you know, if you buy 100 sheets, you can get 50, down to 50 cents a sheet. I haven't tested this yet, but in theory, this should this should be, you know, fairly stickery, like a, a little bit waterproof, you know, kind of like vinyl. 
um, and then also you should be able to print for it really well. So if I pick up a sheet of that, I may shoot a video showing what those turn out like. Um, in the meantime, if I want these to stick to things, I'm just putting transfer tape on one side. Uh, uh, like I said, I would have preferred to have perforated the cutout so that everything stays intact when you pick the sheet up. And then it's easy to put adhesive on each individual piece before ripping them out and applying them. Um, but I think that this stuff would be a huge upgrade. And if anybody else actually is doing this, I would like to see what this turns out like. If, uh, if you get the chance to before I do, to pick some of this up and uh, uh, let me know how that turns out. All right. That is all. Goodbye.